Welcome to Home Biz Tax Talk. My name is Lysandra Everett. I am the Home Biz Tax Lady where I help home business owners win the tax game. Home Biz Tax Talk airs Monday through Friday, nine o'clock-ish. And when you tune into my show, you're going to hear about topics that are important to the home business community. All right. Today, we're talking about partnership agreements. Um, this has actually come up in conversation uh, with clients and prospects over the last week. And so, you know, when something hits like three or four times, it's really time for me to come on and talk about it. So I want to talk about what partners, what a partnership agreement is and, you know, what, what it does for you. Okay. And why you most definitely need to have one. So here's the scene, right? You and your bestie, you guys are having a conversation. You come up with this great idea you like oh my gosh we should totally go into business together you spit shake and boom we are in business okay we need to take the spit shake part out of it <laughs> all right and so what we what we wind up missing is the formalized part of business okay i live by this creed i heard this quote i don't know who said it but it was one of those things that stuck with me it says a good man keeps his word a contract reminds him of what he said okay so you have to really get formal when you get in business and that's where partnership agreements come into okay they come into play because a partnership agreement is really a written plan of how you plan to do business. It is, you know, this is when you sit down in, in an unemotional state and really think about how your business is going to operate. You know, you're talking about capital contributions, like who's putting in what, how much, you know, how often, how is that going to work? Profit and loss distribution. You know, a lot of times we go into business with other person and everything is 50-50, okay, until we start working and realize there might be one person that's contributing more than the other, and then all of a sudden we're really 50-50, and then we have these types of discussions like, okay, that's when folks start to get mad, okay? We start to get mad when there's money involved. And so you have to think about things like, okay, if we're 50-50 partners, and then if we have a disagreement, how are we going to solve the disagreement about the business, right? Because if you... If, you know, one person decides we want to bank over here and the other one says, no, we want to bank over here, how do you figure out where you're going to bank? And I use that as a very small type of, you know, disagreement. But what happens when the disagreements get big? So this is why you have to figure out how you're going to handle disagreements. You know, when one wants to go left, one wants to go right. How do you find the middle of the road? And trust me, prayer and supplication is not the answer, okay? You need to have a plan in place, whether you hire a third-party person or something to help you, you know, come to this decision. You got to have some kind of way to figure out how you're going to come to an agreement on how to move your business forward. You got to think about who can bind the business to like a loan or something. So if one person decides, okay, I think we need this loan, I'm just going to go sign up for it. And the other person has no clue that you're putting your, your business in debt. How is that going to work out? See, that's what a partnership agreement does. It, it specifies how you're going to operate. It talks about management responsibilities. Who's going to be in charge of what? Who's going to be the finance person? Who's going to do the marketing? Who's going to do, you know, what manage whatever day-to-day -day operations? Who's going to, you know, purchase inventory? Who is going to do what? See, we get into these partnerships and we just think everything is going to be hunky-dory. We plan for sunshine, but we never plan for rain. That's another uh, part of the partnership agreement is when one partner decides, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. So then what is the way out? Is it that, you know, if the partner, one partner wants to leave, that they give the other partner the first right of refusal to buy out? Or can that partner just go and sell their share of the business without telling the other partner? Like these are the types of things that you need to think about. And then you have to figure out how you're going to, you know, how you're going to set that valuation. 
See, a lot of times we get in business, we never have a business valuation done. We don't know how much our business is worth. And really, and especially when we're talking about in the home business industry, it's because we're so used to being broke, we never think our business has any value anyway. That's going to hurt somebody, but I hope you hear me and understand that this is what business is all about. You're not in business just to play small and stay broke. You're in business to grow and grow a profit. That's what we're here for. So when you looking at, you know, your partnership, you got to plan for sunshine. You got to plan for rain. You know, what, what happens if, you know, you decide, you know, how are you going to decide if you need a, a new partner? The other partner can come in and says, Hey, I think we need to add so and so to our business as a partner. Okay. Well, how are you going to make that decision? See, these are the things that you have to sit down and figure out before you go and make the money. Because once the money comes, that's when it really starts to get sticky. And especially when we're talking about family members going into business together, business can split up family faster than anything else. And so unless you have a written agreement that says how you're going to do things so that when there is an issue, you can go back to the agreement and say, this is what we said. And then if we're, if you're getting to a point where what you said isn't working anymore, then you can sit down and then you can come up with a new agreement. You can renegotiate these things. But if you never have anywhere to start from, it becomes a big mess. And, you know, and so one person might be feeling, well, I'm doing more than this person. And so I don't think you should have, you know, 50-50 equity. Well, that's not what you said in the partnership agreement, right? So it's not like you can just get mad and go change the rules when you don't have any rules written in the first place. So, you know, so before you go and just, like I said, let, we're not, we're not just going on spit shakes anymore. We're going to go and sit down and figure out how you're going to structure this business. That is what business people do. And if you can't sit down and construct a partnership agreement when you have no money, what do you think is going to happen when you do get money? Who is going to manage the finances? Who is going to be the tax contact person? You know, how, who's, who's going to take care of those things? So this is why you just don't go and, you know, do stuff all willy nilly. This is why you consult people, right? Because see, like I said, you can go and you can form these business structures on your own. Absolutely. But when you do that, nobody's asking you the tough questions. That's what, that's when you hire people, professional people like me, that's going to ask you the tough questions. And if you can't answer the tough questions before you get started, what's going to happen when you got thousands of dollars on the line? After you've contributed all of this money, you've invested money, time, effort, and all of that. And then it all goes to pieces all because you didn't sit down and have a conversation in the beginning. So partnership agreements really help you provide a foundation for your business, how it's going to operate, who's going to be in charge of what, you know, like, I mean, like I said, even little stuff like who, where are we going to bank? Who's going to be our CPA? Who's going to do our taxes? Who's going to be a bookkeeper? You know, you have to figure out who is going to do those things. And if you're going to hire those people, who makes a decision on who gets hired? And then when it comes down to distributing profits or having guaranteed payments, like who is going to actually be, are you both going to be active in the business? Is only one person going to be active in the business? You know, these are all important discussions to have before you start making money. And that's what a partnership agreement does. And then, you know, there is, will you be able to figure out everything in the beginning? No, no, you will not. But when things come up, you can sit and if you figure out how to make it work, okay, great. This is what we're going to do in the future. You add it to the partnership agreement. It's a working document is a living, breathing document that is going to change. 
because you're not going to come up with everything. But once you have something in place that's more formalized and structured, then everybody's on the same sheet of music. And then if one person decides, you know what, I can't do this anymore for whatever reason, you already have a plan for that. And, you know, and especially when it comes down to committing your business to um, like a business loan or something. Listen, there have been plenty of people who have committed their businesses to something that they had absolutely no authority to do. But... Because it wasn't written down, what, what are you going to do? So now you buy you 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 binded a company to an agreement, and now the so not only one partner suffers, the other partner or partners suffer, right? So this is why you write this stuff down so that it's crystal clear that when it comes down to you know uh, you know getting a business loan or something. That not one, it, not one person can just make that decision. It requires both signatures. Even for your bank account, does a bank account require one signature or two? Because if it just requires one, then one partner can just go and write a check, empty the business bank account without the other partner's knowledge. Nothing illegal. Okay? So... These are the things that you need to have in place. A partnership agreement is a basic, basic thing, okay? When it comes down to going into business with other people, you have to figure out how you're gonna do business and then you need to write it down and put it in a safe place where each person has a copy, you got a working copy, whatever, right? So that when something happens, you got something to fall back on to say, this is what we said on this date. And you might meet annually to update it or whatever, however you do that, but you got to have something in place. Okay. And so this, and I promise you the partnership agreements, I help people form their businesses. And these are the type of questions that I ask. Can I tell you the partnership agreement takes the most work? Because one person is thinking one thing, the other person is thinking something else. And so then we have to come to some sort of agreement. The partnership agreement is the most difficult thing to get done. That's why I said it's very easy to get in business. Staying in business is hard. And then leaving a business, that can be even more difficult. So, before you go get into business all willy-nilly with your cousin Ray Ray around the corner, get a partnership agreement, hire a third party if you need to, to sit down and draft this agreement. And I highly recommend you hire a third party because that is a disinterested party. You hire someone that's got absolutely nothing to do with this to help you, you help you craft this partnership agreement because they're going to ask the tough questions. They don't care one way or the other who gets what. For me, I don't care. I'm just asking you the questions so that, like I said, when the, when the money comes, then you have these things already figured out. All right. So. Hope that gives you something to chew on. All right. Get you get your partnerships agreements in place. And hey, listen, you can have a partnership agreement with yourself. Can I tell you how that helps you? A partnership agreement with yourself is not necessarily a partnership agreement. But when you really sit down and think about how you're going to do business. Then you have something written down that when, you know, the poo poo hits the fan, right? You like, okay, what did I say I was going to do in this situation? You can go back and look at it. Okay. So thank you guys so much for tuning into Home Biz Tax Talk. Again, my name is Lysandra Everett, and we are here Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock-ish. And if you have not booked your 15-minute complimentary consult, you can do so right here, www.homebiztaxchat.com. All right, see you guys later. Bye.